Well, hi everyone, it's Than from Tidal Gardens. Now let's talk about Xenia. This coral has been a staple in this hobby for many, many years, and the reason is it's one of the few corals that has its own independent motion. So what people probably don't realize is that there's actually quite a lot of variety of Xenia out there. Some are different colors, and some don't pulse as much as others, and I'll be highlighting all of them in a few moments here. A common misconception of these corals is that their motion is some sort of eating behavior. It's really not. They don't actually have any sort of digestive tract in their stalk. Their motion is to create water movement. Xenia are normally found in very, very still water, and their pulsing motion helps displace water around them to provide better water exchange. They actually get most of their nutrients from light and absorbing nutrients directly through their skin. Now let's talk about some of the more uncommon varieties. There's a coral out there called a blue Xenia, but in reality, more often than not, it's not a Xenia at all. Rather, it's a Cespitularia, and it's uncommon in its own right. Now, Cespitularia do not pulse, and they grow more tree-like in shape. You don't see them too often because they're infrequently collected, and they really don't ship very well. But hey, if you're looking for some really rare soft corals, try searching one out. But again, it's not really a Xenia. It turns out, though, that there really is a blue Xenia. Now, they're unlike most other Xenias in that they don't pulse very much, but they resemble the shape and motion of Anthelia. And if you turn off the pumps completely, the hands do move on their own. Also, the tips of true blue Xenia take on an interesting corkscrew shape. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Red Sea Pulsing Xenia and the True Blue Xenia. You can tell the color differences as well as how they differ in size and in motion. Despite differences in appearance, an aspect all Xenia share is a phenomenal growth rate, making them nearly perfect for aquaculture. In the right conditions, they can reach plague proportions. Now, what these right conditions are, however, is a bit of a mystery. In about 20% of the tanks, they just don't do very well. But in about 80% of the tanks, Xenia establishes well and grows very, very quickly. Then again, 78.6% um, of all statistics are made up, so take that for what it's worth. Okay, as I mentioned before, the pulsing action that Pom Pom Xenia and Red Sea Xenia have is an adaptation to deal with low water flow. Because of this, water flow is a very important aspect of keeping Xenia. Here, you can see the difference between low laminar flow, that's on the left, and a stronger surge on the right. So you can see here that the Xenia pulse more in the lower flow. So I recommend finding areas of low current to bring out the pulsing activity of these types. Blue Xenia, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. To me, it looks better in a stronger flow. The stalks actually get longer, and the way they blow in the surge is very aesthetically pleasing. This colony on the right is sitting practically in front of the surge box. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Now if you like these videos, please subscribe to this channel. And in the comments below, let me know what your take on Xenia is. Is it a tough coral for you, or is it an unkillable plague? Let me know. Thanks, bye-bye.